morning. This is Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abels and Hyman. We taste better. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Naomi Nachman, and I'm about all the food all the time. I love to shop for it, cook it, eat it, eat at restaurants. Anytime you don't feel like, feel like cooking, you can actually give me a call because I'm a kosher personal chef. My business is called the Aussie Gourmet, and I love to cook. So, you know. I hope you'll tune in every week and hear about my cooking adventures, my kosher food traveling, and all the fun and interesting recipes and guests that I have each week. I want to hear about your feedback too. You can email me at naomi at nachumsegel.com. You can join me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter. I think I covered all the social media things there. Yeah, so uh, if you eat it, share it with me. I'd love to hear about it. So last week we had a giveaway, had an amazing time here in the studio. We actually had a barbecue. Actually, if you want to watch the show that we did, you can go onto YouTube, Nachum Siegel Net, um, on, under YouTube and his channel, his very own channel, um, and you can watch our show. We had Sharon Lurie from South Africa, who was visiting us from Johannesburg, and our sponsor, um, Seth Levitt from Abels and Hyman. We actually had a cookout right here in the studio. It was so much fun and we got to eat all these cool sausages and hot dogs and crazy things that we made right here. And Sharon, who is a cookbook author of two meat cookbooks, so in honor of Memorial Weekend, we gave out two of her cookbooks called The Kosher Butcher's Wife and The Kosher Butcher's Wife Celebrates. And we had so many entrants into this competition. And the winner is, actually, ZK, have we got a drum roll there? I wonder if we can do a drum roll. ZK's going to line that up. And the winner is Rebecca from Brooklyn. I think that's Rebecca Goldman from Brooklyn, New York. You are the winner of Sharon's two books. And we will send those out directly to you. Thank you, ZK. That was a great drum roll. I'm joined in the studio today by ZK, my amazing engineer. We have so much fun together working and eating and tasting and drinking through our shows. And I have three amazing guests. I have Abby Wallen all the way from uh, uh, Passaic, New Jersey. She's going to join us over the phone. I have Ellie Schreiber from Get Paid because we're talking to talk a little bit about kosher food traveling. And I have Naomi Ross uh, from Woodmere joining me right here in the studio on this beautiful air of Shabbos. Um, And we are going to talk all about Shavuot and Shavuot recipes and some of the halachot and dairy and all that great stuff. So uh, we're very excited. She has a wonderful spread in the Joy of Kosher magazine, which is out now. This is the uh, latest edition. So Naomi is going to join us later on the show. I'd like to welcome my first guest over the phone, Abby. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm a little hoarse, so you'll have to excuse me. Me me too also. I don't know if my regular listeners know, but I'm, I'm a little husky because I had laryngitis all week. Oh, wow. You're feeling better, though. Yeah, and you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's slowly coming back. Slowly okay. coming back. I think it might be more allergies than anything else. People keep telling me that. I'm like, I'm Australian. I don't have New York allergies. <laughs> but I don't think that they believe me. They think I'm crazy. It's funny. Anyway, so what's up? Uh, you tell me. It's Erev Shavuos, and I can't think of anyone better than I'd like to have decorating my table for Shavuot or my shawl than you because you are so talented. You've got your J Create magazine, and you've got your business not too shabby uh, giftware, and you're just like, it's really taken off. You are so busy. Yes, thank God. Baruch Hashem. My company is growing steadily, and we're doing some really amazing things, and by, I hope by September I'll have two amazing announcements to make, but they're right now in the works. Okay, you'll keep us posted. Soon, yeah, we'll be able to say what's going on. But So our new J. Create magazine just came out. It's up on jcreatemagazine.com. Okay. And if you click on the issues, you'll see our latest. We did a mini mag for Shavuos. Um, yeah, it's very cute. Yeah, it's really great. We have a really good article that um, you know, I do it with two other women, Esty Lavitt, who's our executive director, and Miro Goldwasser, who is our graphic artist and creative director. And so Miro put together this amazing article, um, how to make bouquets, um, you know, how to make vases, not using just a regular vase, but what else could you put your flowers in that you might just have standing around your house? That is such so, a brilliant idea because some people, you know, it, they don't have vases or they you get last-minute bunches of flowers from guests that come for lunch. Remember we talk about when you go out for a meal, you got to bring a gift and someone's going to bring flowers for shovel what and you don't have enough vases. So what are mm-hmm. we going to use? Mm-hmm. So you know what my favorite thing to use is? And it's going to sound so strange. Most people think I'm crazy, but I actually like cans. Cans? Just, 
cans. Just if you're making something for Shavuos and you have cans or jars, put your flowers in there. They're like amazing. A marinara and jar? Like Geffen marinara like, jar? Like, okay, so a marinara jar for sure, glass jar, or you could use some of those aluminum cans, like for your cow, like uh, corn or green beans or uh, pineapple chunks, you know. Sometimes you have those those lying around that you yeah. just used, you've just cooked with. So just clean it out and uh, make sure that the top is not um, sharp because you don't want to hurt yeah, yourself. Yeah, but yeah. Just take your aluminum can and just fill it up with water and put your flowers in there. Or you can even, like, take some burlap or lace and tie it around the outside if you don't like the look of the aluminum. Okay, that's pretty. But, but imagine if you had, like, four or five of them just sitting on your table with all different bunches of flowers. It would be amazing. So be pretty. So pretty. I, I actually, when I was looking at the, the um, magazine, you know, I, I get it online all the time and I'm always looking at it because I'm not so creative. That's why I have you to do it for me and give me all the ideas. And yes. I, I love that you had like a $5 sesh, section of how to put yes. it together for under $5. Beautiful bouquets. Yes. Yeah, so like the dollar store is the best place for you to get a vase, by the way, just so you know. Like ah. they have amazing, they have really great glass glass vases, and you would never know that the dollar store is a great place to just get some stuff. You could even use like I know this is going to sound so strange, but you could even <laughs> use boots and put them on your table, put them outside your house with a with a thing of flowers. You know, it's so nice. You know, to like just rain have boots? like a nice bouquet when you walk in the door. Like rain boots, uh, rain boots, rain boots, old shoes. You could even use a colander, by the way. If you if you line the colander with like a plastic sheet so that yeah. the water doesn't come through, you can use a colander and put flowers in there. It's beautiful. That's very cute. Very creative. J create. Yeah. J create. So creative. Wow. And I, there's a lot of different things. You could even use a watering can or a pitcher. Right. Right. You know, there's lots of different things that you could do um, to make it look, or even like a teacup. You no, know? just think of like different or a teapot that, that your flowers I've... could be held in. I mean. There's a lot of different things. We also have an article, which um, I loved personally. It was my article about color theory. And, yes, um, I thought that was can, very clever. Yeah, you could basically take, you, it, first of all, it gives you a, like a little lesson on what color theory and the color wheel is, and then how to pick your flowers and how to make a beautiful bouquet using the color theory method. So, you know, like, for example, we have primary colors, we have secondary colors, and how to mix and match them so that they look pleasant, like they look pleasing to the eye and visually, you know, exciting for, you know, for the guests that are coming or for you even. So it just gives you a little lesson. And then you can actually even download your own color wheel and then teach it to your kids. And the kids can color in their own color wheel. So it's like an extended activity. And even teachers can use it in their classroom. Right. It's very nice where you're creating your own palette, that your, the colors that your family likes. Yes, exactly. And they exactly. should maybe try to match the living room colors, like, so mm -hmm. it doesn't clash. I mean, I'm, I'm into that. Like, maybe yeah. it's cool and trendy to have, like, you know, if you've got a, you know, my, say my living room's creams and golds, like, to go with, like, red. Like, I don't know, right. does that so, go or? Exactly, right. So how, what colors could you use that would, meaning, like, looking at your, looking at your, your room, right? Like, my dining room is beige and, and white and cream. So I like to bring, personally, I love to bring in burgundy. That's like my favorite color. That's my go-to color. Okay. So so the way the color theory works is, is that the colors that are next to the color on the color wheel. So if, let's say you have red. So next to red is burgundy and purple and orange. And then, so any of those colors next to that are touching that burgundy color, right, that red color, right. will, be, will be pleasing. Like it'll match. It'll look good together. And anything opposite red will look good too. That's a complementary color. Uh -huh. So, so that's why green green looks so good with red and burgundy because they're complementary colors. Oh, nice! So, so, so you could, yeah. you should try to also then match your stemware and your dishes exactly, and exactly. and your like, um, you, like a lot of people usually like on Yontif like they're using like their their <laughs> their fleshig dishes, but now for Shavuos they're using dairy dishes, so it's kind of going to be a whole different color palette, and it, it 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 lends itself to being such a fun different type of table on Shavuos because you're now bringing in different colors to match with your dishes. And so you're, and that's why I love, like, even if you have, like, a bunch of, like, like teacups that you use in milk, like, like, or mugs, even coffee mugs. Right. To put flowers into. Right. I had a little sneeze there. <laughs> I 
From see, we're talking about uh, our cold. So I, I just sneezed while you were talking. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, I I think it's really beautiful to like jazz up your tables and jazz up your living rooms. And we, even though we're a food show, we like to present our food, especially before the chagim. I try to consult with you because I want my food to be fabulous, but I want my dining room and my table to be fabulous. And you know that outside area. And we are coming into spring, and we are in, you know pushing into summer. Um, so we had some little muggy days there this week, a little rainy days this week, but um, we want to just make sure that, you know, everything is all complete for our beautiful shovel word. I don't know what the weather's going to be like next week. It's Friday now, so if anybody looks onto the five-day forecast or seven-day well, forecast. I think Shabbos is supposed to be really nice, so I'm very excited for tomorrow, that's for sure. Okay. I think it's, yeah, the next week, I think for Shavuos, I think it's supposed to be nice. Oh, no, maybe it is raining. I don't know. I'm not going to be here. I'm actually going to Dallas. I'm That's right. Oh, it's going to be nice and hot there for you. It'll be really nice. And we're all, my whole family, we are driving from Jersey to Dallas. It's gonna, Wait, Jersey it's to Dallas? Can we, can we just talk about that? Why? Sure. Wait, why? And that, that's a good introduction to have Ellie on the show. Uh, Ellie Schreiber from Get Paid. You're driving because you want to do a road trip. Okay, so my my How far my, is um, that? my uncle is making a bar mitzvah, and my mother has begged us for all of us to join her in driving down to Dallas. My mom's from Dallas and from Tennessee; she's from the South, and um, and she begged me and my sister and my two brothers, and we are all driving with our families <laughs> in three different cars down to Dallas. It's very exciting. We're going right through Nashville and Memphis and Little Rock and. How, how do you, yeah. how do you, okay, how long is that going to take you? It takes 22 hours, and we're doing it in two, three, the, going there, we're going to do it in three days, like, uh -huh. three, like half a day on Sunday, full day Monday, half a day Tuesday. You better get there on the time, no stopping on Tuesday, man, you just got to gun it. You just got to gun it, for sure, we're leaving from Memphis to Dallas, that's like the last six hours, we got to do it. Oh, wow, we cool. Well, why don't wish you an Asiya yeah. Tova. Thank you. A Shabbat Thank Shalom. You so much. A Shabbat Shalom, all the best, I know you've had a hard few weeks so uh yes. wishing you and it'll your be, family all the best thank you it'll be nice to spend it all together as a family yes. I think that that's what you know it'll be it'll be really special it'll be beautiful that's for sure yeah okay abby thank you very much all the way from new jersey i'm sorry you couldn't my make it into pleasure. the studio today but uh thank you. we'll get Mary, you next thank time you for having me it's oh my pleasure. pleasure and we'll talk soon about july 4th stuff get amazing. how to get your amazing picnic tables looking fab Ooh, fantabulous. Talk to you soon. Okay, talk to you soon. Have a good job, a safe Bye. trip, and a good yontif. You too, good job. Good yontif. Bye. Okay, that was Abby all the way from New Jersey. Check out her website and her Instagram. Uh, not too shabby. She does a beautiful, beautiful uh, um, decorative uh, stemware and bowls and all this kind of gorgeous creative stuff that I just cannot do. So I'm always in awe of her talent. Um, so she... Abby tells, tells us she's driving to Dallas, and I'm looking at my next guest, Ellie Schreiber, and we're both thinking, what the heck are you driving to Dallas for? <laughs> we can go there for free on your credit card points. And I'm always talking about kosher food traveling and all the traveling that I do do, and I just want you to know I do it all on points. I have been doing it for about 20 years um, working the point system, you know, being from Australia, I'm always trying to get back there. Um, and most of the time that I have gone, a couple of us have gone on free tickets. And, you know, when I first met Ellie and I told him that I've been doing this for a long time and I told him my little tricks, he was like somewhat impressed that someone was, has been doing it. More than someone. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I said, you know, Ellie, we got, I got to have you in on the show because I want to share the love of the kosher food traveling, how people can do this. I've actually gone to California on free tickets so I could go eat at Oxnard restaurant in California and if anyone who knows me knows this is not a joke I really did it so um, my husband's ticket was paid and mine was free and we went for an extended weekend so we could go check out the Oxnard um, and he also had a conference there at the same time but that's what how, when I did my show from um, Oxnard the interviews back in October that's how I got there so I said let's have Ellie in and let's talk to him a little bit about you know, kosher food traveling, because even though it's air of Shavuot, it's also air of the summer and people are starting to think about travel plans and how you can go out to eat for free by cashing in your points, yep. you know. So, uh, hi, Ellie. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. I know. This is great. It's We've been very talking exciting. about this. We've been talking about this for a while. I first want to give you a shout out. We oh. had the privilege of spending uh, Yontif together in Lake George. Yeah. And uh, we t partook in your wine and cheese seminars and my wife, Yal, uh, was with me when we uh, we were able to uh, see that presentation, and she's now all into cheese, and she's buying all these different kinds of cheeses, 
And uh, to me, that's exciting because I love that kind of stuff. So I, I will credit that to her partaking in your uh, seminar, which was very enjoyable on Yantif. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Ellie. And a shout out to Brent Delman, who taught me everything I know about cheeses. And to cheeseguy.com. Please go order his cheeses. You can get them through his, through, uh, they will deliver, ship out to you through growandbehold.com. You can get his cheese, uh, the Cheese Guy's cheeses through Grow and Behold. I hope that's making sense. <laughs> So our company, Get Paid LLC, helps people maximize the credit card miles and points. And uh, whenever we hear a, a story where somebody needs to go travel somewhere and they're going through these um, all kinds of travel trips and arrangements, which are which is exciting. Traveling to Dallas by car is exciting, but obviously it's a bit of a challenge, especially right. when you're, uh, you're a large family. Right. So what we try to do is help people understand how if they use their credit cards wisely, it could create for them an alternative revenue stream, which will allow them to travel using their miles and points on airlines, booking hotel stays, using it to obviously get cash to go to the restaurant of their choice. And people aren't aware, you'd be surprised, people um, call us all the time and they say, well, I have this amount of miles and this amount of points, Does it? Is it worth anything? Um, what can I do with it? I'm having some issues using it and what we're trying to help people understand is you can take those miles and points and basically go wherever you'd like to go if you want to go to israel if you want to go to hawaii if you want to go to miami if you want to go to la what these miles and points can do for you is they're basically a currency it's like cash and it will enable you to get where you need to go now what we often have found is people get frustrated because let's say they have one credit card and they earn points, and they fi they finally decide a date when that works for everyone, and yeah. they want to go to England for their niece's uh, bat mitzvah, okay, and they want to make a whole travel uh, trip out of it. What they have found is the card that they used, for whatever reason, during the time that they want to travel, it's not open. There's no availability. There's blackout dates. On United Airlines, there's a lot of blackout dates. Exactly. So... They get very frustrated, and then when they decide they would rather cash out those points with the credit card companies, they get the least amount of value. Right. At most, the credit card companies will give them one penny for every point that they have. So uh, 100,000 points would be $1,000. 100,000 points is... Is $1,000 with the credit card company. Now, that may sound like a lot of money, but when you use a company like mine, what we would do is we'll give you much more than the credit card companies... And if you need to get somewhere and you're not able to get there because the point that you have is specific to the airline that you need to fly in, which is not allowing you to fly, since we're dealing with so many customers, dealing with thousands of points, dealing with people who need to fly so many different places and dealing with people that want to redeem their miles for cash because they're not going to fly anywhere, they'd rather take the money. So we're able to take 50 different um, programs and figure out the best way to get people where they need to go maybe using your own miles and points to get you on the flight that you want, maybe using your own miles and points to give you money to go on the flight that you want, or maybe using our own miles and points to get you, and you'll just pay us with the points that you have so you don't have to lose out. Right, and there's no, they don't, you don't even take a fee for it because you want our points. Exactly. We have a very unique business where we're paying people for their <laughs> points. And, and to tie it into the food oh, aspect, because this is a food show, on a number of occasions we've partnered with um, kosher restaurants that whenever people sell us a certain amount of miles and points that we use, they'll get a gift certificate to, to, to a uh, restaurant of wherever they're choosing to fly. So, oh, that's so nice. Yeah, so it's Great. very, yeah. So we're offering a lot of incentives for people. Um, we are also, we, we, we actually um, focus on helping people understand what best credit card is out there for them to uh, use okay based on what they're spending are they putting uh, their kids tuition on the credit card yeah not all the yeshivas let you do that exactly yeah we wish right <laughs> <laughs> be good for everybody but the school yeshiva loses out the right. i think sometimes they'll charge you like my daughter's in queen's college and i put her tuition on a credit card i think i pay a 75 dollar fee for that right but, but i get so 70 you know a lot exactly. of miles so i kind of figured it out that that's worthwhile but if it's not worthwhile then R it's not you know. Right, and there's there are ways that are automatically worthwhile if you're able to hold cup, as they say in Yiddish, which is <laughs> there are many different... The credit cards are all loving people's business, right? Every credit card company now is trying to figure out how do I get Americans to add to America's debt ceiling? How do I get more people in debt, right? 
So what they do is... You have is, to be so careful. You have to be very careful. And, and I always say that I prided myself that I entered my marriage without any debt. I never touched a credit card, right? I had to pay my own way for a lot of the things. But the one thing I knew is stay away from credit cards. Credit cards. Let's assume that most people <laughs> now that we're talking to are disciplined. So the credit card companies offer bonuses that are for sure worth it. They'll tell you if you spend $2,000 in three months, we'll give you this credit card and it will be 100,000 points. So what you do is you take that credit card for one month, you get the points, you, get the, you pay whatever you have to, you sell the points or use the points to fly to Israel or England or wherever, fin put that credit card to the side, go on to the next one. And you'd be surprised. I have in my wallet 30, 40 credit cards. <laughs> I have a bunch in the safe. It there are people, and, and we strongly urge the community to, you know, we understand how expensive it is to uh, live the life of an Orthodox Jew. I mean, that's the bottom line. We right. have yeshiva tuition. We have kosher food. We live in areas that are more expensive because people need to be in their synagogues. If people understand that they can use miles and points to create extra money for themselves, I'm not exaggerating that if you do this credit card game, but right? you got to do it correctly. You have to do and it correctly. Smartly. You have to do it smartly. We have people have spreadsheets. Yeah, you can I got make, a spreadsheet. You can make extra ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year, and that's not an exaggeration. You get a credit card that tells you spend two thousand dollars. We'll give you sixty thousand points. You spend the two thousand dollars. You take the sixty thousand points. That's eight nine hundred dollars. Right. right. Then you go on to another credit card that offers you forty thousand points. Right. You just. How does the whole credit rating thing work? Because, you know... So we always say that the, the, the thing that most affects your credit card rating is paying your bills. Yeah. Right? You just got to pay your bills. Right. Whenever there is somewhat of an effect on a credit card, uh, on your credit when you apply for a credit card, because they pull your credit and that you don't want to have too many pulls on your credit. You don't want okay. too many people checking into your credit. However, I just told you I have 40 credit cards in the span of three, four, five years, I've I've applied for tens and tens of credit cards. My credit rating is 760. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. Right? Right? It's not over 800. And I would, I would, um, I would guess that the reason why it's not over 800 is because of of the fact that I applied for a lot of credit cards. However, 760 is still a fairly good right. credit rating. So, um, so you know, it's the benefit, in my opinion, far outweighs. Uh, whatever negative effects to your credit this right. will this will cause. I do not spend a dollar, basically, not even a dollar, <laughs> if I can help it, without a credit card, um, being tied to a credit card, and I pay my bill in full before it's due. I'm like a little crazy like that. My husband gets nuts. He's like, why are you bring paying it? But yeah. you know what? I just want to stay on top of it. I know when it gets paid and all that. And you, you, I send it out, and sure. you know what? They're very happy to give me credit cards, but I'm trying to streamline. What are the best two credit cards? Best two credit cards right now is Chase has a um, a temporary bonus offer where they're giving you sixty thousand points for the Chase Inc. credit card. All right, but you have to have a business for that. No, you do not have to have a business. Okay. Um, you have to spend five thousand dollars in three months. That's fairly steep. Generally, yeah, it's that's a lot, right? Two twenty five hundred to three thousand. But you know, we, you'd be surprised. There are plenty of people that can spend five thousand dollars in three months. Sixty thousand points is a nice chunk of change. Right. How it, much is that worth? Uh, off the top of my head, it's about eight nine hundred dollars So you spend $5,000. Okay. We're all right? getting an education here. You spend 5000 You get back eight dollars $900. I mean, that's like uh, almost 20%, right? And what? Annual fees. Annual fees. Right. Annual fees. There are annual sure. There's always annual fees, and they usually waive the fee for the first year. Right. So um, next one, there's a great credit card if you want to fly somewhere. Yeah, that's uh, me. I, I love to fly. And you don't want to sell the points. Uh, the U.S. Airways credit card is offering 40,000 miles, get this, with the first purchase. That means if you walk into a Dwayne Reed and you swipe For a, a, a gum, 40,000 uh, points right there. And 40,000 points is almost, it's like a ticket and a half in the domestic United States, round trip ticket. So I think, I, I think people can start understanding... <laughs> <laughs> that if they do this, uh, I'll go. I'll. I'll, I'll and, end. And there are so many great restaurants that we got to. You know, I always say I want to fly to every state in America and eat at their restaurant or any place in the world. I can. St I'm really like. I can't say I'm and, doing and, them all, but I'm working towards it. And <laughs> and we'd love to be able to to offer the new uh, to reoffer that um, that incentive where people that sell us a certain amount of miles and points 
will be able to use it for a gift certificate um, for a restaurant of their choice. We did it last year. We were, it was very successful. Um, we'll, we'll be seeing over the next month or so whether or not we should unveil it during the summer. Um, That's but great. the funny thing was my partner, Yaakov Portnoy, he, uh, he's the CEO and he founded the company. And he, he's the Y in P. He's the Y. If Spell it out. Yeah, Spell it's get paid. Get paid is Penny, P, Ellie, that's me, Yaakov, Dudi. Uh, we, we are three three friends from uh, Camp Haverim. Shout out to Camp Aishel and uh, Camp Maganava, a camp for children with special needs. We, we've known each other for 20 years almost. And my brother-in-law, D, Dudi. Uh, but my partner, Yaakov, um, was helping people in, in Kolel, in, uh, in the Chafetz Chaim Yeshiva, helping them sign up for the American Express bonus oh, bonuses yeah. um, and then helping them cash it out and one night we all got together and he said hey i'm helping the community sign up and get these bonuses and get money for them why don't we start this together why don't we start this as a business and two and a half years later um you know we've been we've been in the five towns uh we're from new york city we we have uh, uh, customers in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Israel, Canada, LA, Montreal, Detroit, Baltimore, Chicago, Cleveland, we're all over. And, um, and you know, we've sponsored different events, Priority Ones, um, Bolathon, uh, Chafetz Chaim's um, Chinese Auction. Um, we care about the community. We're in the community. We're, we're all uh, struggling to pay our bills like yeah. everybody else. <laughs> And this represents for the community uh, a new revenue stream. If you do it correctly and if you do it properly, you've um, got to be smart about this. You have to be smart about it. And and I want to put a disclaimer here. Um, people always ask us if this is legal, and it's one hundred percent legal. But the credit card companies frown upon people cashing out. Right? They want to give you the least amount of value for your miles and points. Right. And they structure the programs in a way. It's like an insurance company of the past. You know. Their, their, their principles deny, 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 because the first time uh, you're denied, the people that come back to refile, right, to reuse and to try again to fly somewhere, you lose 20% of the people. So, you know, for the, for the health insurance companies, that was found illegal. For the credit card and airlines, somehow they're able to get away with it. In fact, they've been sued many, many times that the way they structure the mile programs is... I don't, know, I don't know if it's unconstitutional, but it's illegal because they're not creating an environment for people to maximize. So we always tell people, what you're doing is against the terms and conditions of some of the credit card companies. Um, some of them couldn't care less. Some of them are more strict. But uh, you know, the, the worst thing that they can do is tell you, you violated the terms of our conditions. You jaywalked. And we're going to close your account. They can't sue anyone. They can't uh, come after anyone because... The federal government hasn't even decided how to to view deal with it. Right. miles and points. Like, is it? Wor it's definitely worth money, but is it? You know, you for example, you earn uh, you you have money in the bank. Uh, you have eight point eight percent interest. You earn some some additional pennies. Like, pennies. Pennies. Right. The <laughs> bank can't tell you what to do with those pennies. For some reason, the the credit card companies can tell you you can't. You know, you can fly, it's, it's hilarious, you can fly your niece and nephew or your employee, you know, using your miles right. of points, but if you were to give it to your neighbor and they give you $300 for it, that's, that they don't allow. The funny thing is... So this is a little loophole. It's a little bit of a loophole. JetBlue, though, is always the most progressive and the most I love it. JetBlue. JetBlue they, is, they allow you to combine exactly. miles. Exactly. JetBlue is the first company that they got ahead of the curve. They say, this is ridiculous. Right, our, we're here. These these are earned. Let's let's be clear. These are earned by our customers. We'll let them do whatever they want with them. I love JetBlue. S love them. Yeah, and there's a, it was also a recent uh, article, um, a recent story about a rabbi. I think he was in um, the Midwest somewhere that sued Southwest because Southwest told him he complained too much. <laughs> it was a funny story. He complained too much, so they took away all of his miles and points. So he, this case was brought in front of the U.S. Supreme Court and. Um, unfortunately, he, it, they didn't, uh, I don't think they decided to hear the case. That was the case. Oh, okay. They're not going to get involved in the, the mileage <laughs> business. But, um, it's funny. But again, they, the credit card companies and airlines keep getting sued more and more often whenever they reach out to someone and say, hey, you can't get money for something that you earned that we control. And people are like, wait, I understand you say that, but why is that fair? So we, we envision that there's going to be a scenario where it's just, you know, it becomes 
not even a loophole. Right. So, so you know, you hear a lot about like the changes in terms and conditions. You know, like I think Delta's changing their terms and, you know, they're, they're devaluing the miles a little bit. Let's talk about Hass. Can we talk about Hass? Yeah, I mean. I'm crying. I lost yeah, this a, t- was, I lost this a was, ticket. This, yeah, this was a. Um, what I, happened? Um, they had a dispute with. Hold on one second. The Hass. Advantage service was a credit card. I'm sorry, I'm just going to backtrack Please. so I can explain to the listeners. Um, you know, there was a, a credit card, uh, you signed up, you got LL points. So once you hit 56,000 points, which, you know, is unfortunately not that hard being from and life, um, and you would get a free ticket to Israel. Now, if you use that free ticket in the summer, like I did, it's worth $1,600. And I, we, we got four free tickets on it. So it was great. Um, I was on my way to yet another ticket and now Ellie's going to continue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, yeah. they, they, um, they went bust or something. They, yeah, they, they have a dispute and nobody really knows the details. Yeah, but we th- want the inside th- scoop. Th- th- I certainly don't have the inside uh. scoop. But the way it works is the credit card companies have an agreement with the airlines. So let's just pick American Express. American Express allows you to transfer your points into 50 different airlines. It's the best program out there. And somehow um, the airlines reimburse American Express for that relationship so if you need to fly to um from israel. The, to israel it's eighty thousand points let's say as an example eighty thousand american express points can get you a ticket on let's say air france through france and air france pays back american express okay what their arrangements are nobody knows unless you work for either of them so the same uh partnership agreement was with the Hass card, the HAS card, which is a Jewish credit card. Yeah, had, mine had a picture of the Kotel on it. It's it very cool. It inspired me to spend so I could go to Israel. Exactly. Spend wisely. And so Hass um, had some kind of partnership and relationship with El Al. And, um, and that partnership was something the Jewish community was very excited about. Well, yeah, it was fabulous. It was um, 10 years old. They have some kind of dispute. And all of a sudden, El Al decides not to continue the partnership. You're out. No points for you. You're out. And so what happened was, and then this just highlights that issue where you really, the the customer is considered like nothing. And all of a sudden, people were accruing thousands and thousands of Haas points like that. Gone. Gone. What are you going to do? You're going to sue Haas? You're going to sue El Al? Right. So should I just close my credit card and go, ha? Yeah, I think that's something that you can do. I mean, but I was told not to close credit cards. Yeah, it's for credit. It's always great to have credit. If you have credit, the law of credit is keep the credit. But um, I don't even think you know. Talking out loud here, and again, I I don't know anything about this in in the in in the internal rooms of Elal and Hass. I wish I was a fly in the wall. But, I know, right? But um, you know, I don't think it would even help because the dispute is with Elal. Right. I'm so, so sad about it. Like people, yeah, we I had, know people we, that lost a lot of, we, I mean, myself almost a ticket. People lost many, many tickets and people then cashed out. They got their 1%. They got their one penny. So obviously it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but they lost 30, 40% of the value. Right. So, um, you know, we've heard that they're still um, discussing this, that there may be. So I should hold on to mine for now? Certainly hold on to them. And but again, 1%, people on the, people come to us and had I known about you guys, I would. 1% is nice, but it, you can get so much more. So people shouldn't jump at that so opportunity. So I can send, sell you my house points. Well, you can't, we can't use them right now. Remember, we use them to book travel for other people that right. need to fly. Right now, Haas does nothing for us. Right. Um, um, we, so uh, you can cash it out, though, no? It's not really worth cashing out. No, it's not because we only we only make money when we help people fly. Uh-huh. If you have Haas points and you're not flying to Israel and you want to use that $1,000 to buy um, an iPad and or two. Do it. <laughs> uh, then <laughs> we, do would, we would take your Haas points and fly someone else to Israel, but we can't do that anymore. You can't do that the right same now. Thing, uh, the same thing happened with um, Bank of America points. Bank of America used to allow you to transfer your points into Air Canada. So um, we know that Air Canada flies to Israel. So people that wanted to visit Canada th- and Fire then go to Israel, Israel right? It's a, definitely an option. And we were able to use those points. Bank of America decides that no, that partnership no longer works, no longer transfers to Air Canada. Out goes, out goes Bank of America points. Same, th- same thing. Um, and that's why I think people are getting more and more frustrated because you have no control. You could spend thousands and thousands of dollars earning thousands of miles on a trip next summer to France. All of a sudden, the it's partnership gone. So you is gone. You should book it right away. Like, 
Sure. I should have transferred my house points into Mark Mid points quicker than what I was doing. I was kind of waiting for the whole ticket right. to come through. It didn't cost me money to transfer it. Right. All right, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. So, yeah. um, but you can use it for Travelocity. You can, I can have right. basically a free trip to Florida. Yay. Right, exactly. Or, I mean, yeah, it's still good. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of, of of information that we have that we help people understand how to get the best value, and we offer uh, you know a load of incentives for people to okay. redeem their miles so and points. How can they reach uh, you? They could reach us um, at uh, info at getpaid.com. Paid again is Penny Ellie Yaakov Duddy. So it's paid is P E Y D. Info at getpaid.com. There's an article about um, us coming out this week. In the Five Towns Jewish Home, which we're very excited Yay! about. Yay! I write for um, them too. Ooh. And yes, we see you all the time <laughs> there. And um, and we're going to be, and actually our ad is going to be, we're excited, we're going to be in this uh, May 30th edition of the New York Post for the Israeli Day Parade, which is nice. very exciting. Yeah, we're excited. And, um, and this Sunday, the Israeli Day yeah, Parade. Yeah, that's correct. Two days to go. And um, we, we are... Um, you know, excited to tell everybody about uh, about uh, the fact that people know us as miles and points and cash, and we um, were getting very into booking people's travel, and we have a, I can't believe I, yeah. I almost last forgot thing this. While we wrap well, the last up, yeah. thing, we have a great partnership now with a a luxury vacation rental company in Jerusalem, Rentals of Distinction, oh, where yes. we're allowing people to bu to bundle all their miles and points, and those points could go towards. Um, Booking a vacation apartment in Israel, flying, uh, getting maid service, getting a personal chef in oh, Israel. Okay. It's not me. It's, <laughs> it's not, not me. <laughs> it's not you. And uh, we're excited. Rentals of Distinction is a great company that uh, helps people find private, uh, luxurious apartments. And we're excited about that. So info at getpaid.com, 646-801-7393. And thank you very much again for the opportunity. Okay, Ellie, thank you so much. Oh, my God, my head is spinning from all that information. I hope... Uh, you know, uh, everyone had pen and paper, but quite a lot of my listeners, um, you know, are busy cooking. So I get emails from people telling me they heard the show. They had to listen to the show again so they could have pen and paper and write it down. Um, so I hope that everyone got all that information, especially they want to sell their points. So uh, you know, thank you. I hope uh, I hope uh, every, it goes well for the cust the listeners and for the Get Paid guys, so the Get too. Paid team. <laughs> all right, thank you, Ellie. Okay, you're listening to Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abels and Hyman. We taste better. So I'm my next guest, I'm just going to ask Naomi to switch seats with Ellie. Okay, they're actually switching their headphones. Um, Naomi and I uh, are both uh, personal chefs in the five towns. She's Naomi Ross. I'm Naomi Nachman. <laughs> People mix us up sometimes, you know. All right, she's getting the headphones on. Okay. Um, hi, Naomi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. <laughs> I schlepped her in today. I said, I'll drive you in. You've got no excuse. And I'll get you right back home afterwards. It's a nice, not long day. We used to call each other Naomi Squared. So Naomi Squared. Now you really have Naomi Squared right. in the studio. I know. N Squared. I know, right? <laughs> How are you doing? Everything's good? Yeah. It's been busy. Naomi's had a really busy week this week. Uh, Tell us about your crazy week. <laughs> well, I, I have my hands in a few different pots these days. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do a bit of food writing. Um, actually, check out this uh, upcoming issue of Joy of Kosher. I have a nice uh, feature spread in there. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, so I do a bit of food writing. So yesterday I was involved with a photo shoot for uh, Bina's Relish, uh, Bina Magazine, has me doing a how-to column for the past, I would say, year, year and a half. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of instructional how-tos. And so we try to group all of our shoots, like for a few different um, articles, the photos are grouped together. So yesterday was a photo shoot. In the morning was a Gourmet Glatt demonstration in Borough Park. That was a lot of fun. Gourmet Glatt Market, yep, out there in Borough Park. That was they have a fun. nice space there. They have a great space, and we had a really fun Shibuya demo. So that was the morning, then the photo shoot in the afternoon, and then, um, you know, some personal chefing on, on the side. So it's, it's, it's been it's, busy. It's been busy. You know, you know, there's so much business going on, you know, enough for everybody, right? Like, it's great. It, you know, I, I, I always joke around with my husband that it's, um, 
it's it's amazing to be in in the business but the jewish season is our busy season right? i know so it's, it's a it's a little bit of a double way <laughs> i'm so crazy right now i feel like you know at first it was like after pesach i'll get to it i'm going to clean up the garage right after pesach and then pesach rolled around and now it's everything's after shavuos next thing i know it'll be like august <laughs> I don't want to rush. But. I actually really look forward to the summer because it gives me a little bit of like um, space just for all the preparatory stuff that I don't always have time for during the year. Yeah. So all of the all of the projects and stuff I want to work on developing that I don't always have time to squeeze in during the year, I try to do you know, it in the summertime yeah, for sure yeah you are one busy lady we're just going to talk for a minute about the joy of kosher it's the vegetarian issue i'm going to hold that up our very own station manager miriam wallach who is a vegetarian has a nice little uh, piece about her um they wrote um the piece is called a look into the life of vegetarians and they have uh, miriam wallach talking about life of a vegetarian and they also have Gemma white uh, who is Ari White, you know, the amazing pit master, travels all around. We're going to try to get him on the show in the next couple of weeks. Travel around, travels around New York on the weekends, uh, selling his amazing pulled briskets and smoked barbecues. Remember, it's the Long Island Barbecue Competition. He's going to be there uh, in just a couple of weeks. So uh, look out for that. Hopefully, we'll be having the guests I from that. To that. Yeah, we should go. I'm a judge. I'm so excited. <laughs> Can't wait to eat. I love barbecue. <laughs> and so there's uh, Gemma's article there. I know I love barbecue. But today, we're all about shovelwort and this vegetarian issue kind of. You see the grilled cheese. For those of you who are watching us, there's a, on the Joy of Kosher is this big grilled cheese stack. Um, in the Joy of Kosher this month, um, they've got like, besides all the fabulous articles by Levana Kirschenbaum and Gil Marx and all that, they have um, a great spread. Naomi's done an, a great spread. Naomi is an, besides being an amazing cook, and I'm one of her biggest fans. Um, she's really, really knowledgeable. You know, like the real down to nitty gritty stuff about like. Why do we eat dairy on shovel? We're going to ask her these questions and we're going to go, how did you know so much about Indian food? Because her spread is about Indian food because a lot of Indians um, are vegetarian. They don't eat meat. So, you know, she's just, I thought it's a perfect time to have her on. We can talk about her amazing spread and, you know, discuss discuss some halachic questions about uh, shovel what. But they've got a really nice um, section about, the. they have grilled cheese bars. It's all about the bars. I sound like really Australian, right? Bars. They have a grilled cheese bar, um, a blintz bar or a crepe bar, a yogurt bar. Um, Ale Alexandra Ravati has a whole thing on making your own pasta and growing your own basil. It's like each uh, each uh, edition gets better and better. But, um, you know, I thought I think, that was really cool. I think the bars are, are actually a great idea. And I think the reason they do it so often is because it's just fun. Like when, when you're entertaining, especially um, if you're having a crowd for holiday, it just makes it a lot more festive and fun if you lay out all the options on the table. I remember one year for Shavuos, we did, um, it's actually a very uh, funny thing in my family. <laughs> She's laughing already. I'm, I'm laughing already because <laughs> my family knows that, um, the, the joke of it. Um, one year we did a um, taco bar. Like I, but fish, you would like it, fish tacos. Ah, yum. So we did like, I did all of the different toppings for fish tacos and I laid it out and I said, we're having a taco fiesta, we're having fish tacos. And for the weeks coming up, to Shavuos and you know and I always have a full house on Shavuos I was getting flack they're like fish tacos we're gonna have fish tacos I don't want fish tacos and I was like listen we're having fish tacos and you're gonna like it my mouth is watering and let's talk about some of the things let's this is our what's for dinner segment by <laughs> sponsored by our friends at Gourmet Glut Emporium right here in Cedarhurst thank you for being a sponsor of our what's for dinner segment and this can be a great week night or shovel what meal my mouth is actually watering like crazy i have to swallow because there's nothing like a fish taco you can you know um crisp up some fish yeah it's, it's, how, how do you prepare you, yours well you know traditionally they you do uh batter batter fried fish batter fried so, yeah i mean that that year I, I wasn't cheap. I spent the money <laughs> on good mahi mahi and oh wow, and, she's fancy. But you can uh, also do a uh, flounder. Yeah, for sure. Um, any white fleshed fish would do well with it. Uh, doing a beer battered um, fish, you know, gets a great, great crust as yeah. a, as as a nice uh, crust. I have fish. a recipe in Susie Fishbine's Kosher by Design entertains, and Susie put my beer battered flounder 
in her cookbook. Well, you know, anyway, with um, like traditional English fish and chips, they're using it's a beer batter. A beer batter. Sure. So, so with this segment, the what's for dinner. So let's set up. We're going to do beer battered fish, guacamole, coleslaw. What else? Um, guacamole. Um, Pickled, pickled red onions. Pickled red onions. Yeah. How do we pickle red onions? Um, so really like any pickling you do is a combination of sweet and sour um, to... Sugar and vinegar? You could do sugar and vinegar. Um, that's classic. So, you know, pick, pick, I just actually pickled a bunch for the shoot yesterday. So <gasps> Once it, again, my mouth is watering. But, but for, <laughs> I actually remember for that spread, um, for that fish taco spread, I did pickled red onions, but I threw in, I wanted a little bit of heat, so I threw in a jalapeno pepper. Oh, nice. And that was good. It had a little bit of kick. Okay. Um, but, you know, uh, cider vinegar, brown sugar, right. uh, some peppercorns. Maybe some grilled pineapple would be good in that also. Oh, for sure. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. So that is our What's for Dinner segment, sponsored by Gomic Lat. Delicious fish tacos for a weeknight meal and for shovel what? What a great idea. You could all, you could even do, um, if, you, if you like the, the pickled, like, relishy kind of flavor, You, I, I actually just developed a recipe. I do a lot of recipe development for both the articles and also for the classes I teach. I, I just put together a recipe for... I think it was a few weeks ago. Um, it, it was for Pesach time. Uh, that's when it was. It was for Pesach. I put together a recipe for a um, salmon. You would like this because it's fish. Um, <laughs> a fish queen. Um, Aussie's fish. It was a salmon, but with like a mixed um, sweet pepper relish. And you cook down the, the peppers with, again, the sweet and, you know, vinegary, sweet and sour, um, honey, and, you know, and the cider vinegar. And you let it to cook down with the onions and peppers until it's nice and syrupy and it adds such a kick to, oh, the, delicious. to, to the salmon where can really we find easy. this recipe um that recipe is not yet um online but since your listeners are so nice and uh, attentive um i will try to put it up on my website later in the evening thank you so much well right before shabbos so do it over the weekend or by by sunday morning we don't want to give you that much pressure <laughs> Um, can you do me a favor? What Tell everyone where they can find your website. Okay. So my website is jewishcookingconcepts.com. Uh, it's basic general website telling about the classes I give, um, who I am, you know, the, all the classes and articles that I write. It all started from like much more humble beginnings because it, I never even imagined when I started 10 years ago that it was going to become a whole business. Right. Um, it really actually started as a community service kind of thing because I had put together like a, a crash course for new brides. Yeah. And it was called Cooking for Kalas. It was all basically for the n classes on baking and cooking basics for the new bride. So I threw in like lots of um, tips and, and, and hints and different nice hashkafot, like um, ideas about um, Jewish homemaking, that kind of thing. And I tried to s synthesize all of that together in a, like a four-week crash course. And it was like a community service. I think the first time I gave it, I didn't even charge. It was <laughs> just, it Good girl. It was just like... She's a mitzvah girl. Like, let's just do it. And it just started from there. And Lovely. It went. Lovely. Okay, she's you're really unbelievable. No, it's she's fine. really Naomi's really someone to look up to. She's like my hero. <laughs> Naomi, talk to me about shavuot. Why is milchix? Why is milchix synonymous with shavuot? It's the Jewish, it's the Jewish cheese holiday. You know, <laughs> I, I I don't think that there's any time of year I'd rather be on your talk show than to talk about shavuot recipes because dairy cooking is my favorite thing of ev out of everything I make. Making real dairy cuisine and yeah. make and doing it well is is just a pleasure for me. Right, um, make it real, make it dairy. Real butter, real cream. You know, it's decadent, but if you do it well, then I think that's really I think that's really the challenge. That's really the pitfall. That and I try to speak to all of my um, students and also to a lot of clients about um, the pitfalls of not just dairy, good dairy cooking, but also the balance of good dairy serving, of knowing not just what great dishes to pick, but also how to serve them. We all fall into this sort of rhythm and formula-like um, menu planning for the rest of the year. We are so meat-based in our serving style. So, you know, if you're used to serving for Shabbos or for a holiday, you know, chicken, meat, whatever, and you have your formula of, of serving style, 
and you sort of fill in the blank, right? You have your, you have your main meat and then you have your two side dishes and it all works together like a little formula and it works. But dairy is different. It, right. It's not the same serving style. And if you try to do the same thing with dairy cuisine, it just ends up being really heavy. And I find for myself, I actually once wrote an article about Shavuos and I called it the dairy catharsis. What because does catharsis mean? I'm, I'm, I use little words. <laughs> um, so a catharsis is like an outpouring of expression, like an outpouring of emotion. Okay. okay so, I can deal with that. So it's like a, it's a release, right? It's a release to have all this, what I would call dairy pent up energy, right? <laughs> that you have to, you know, oh, we finally can make a beautiful dairy meal. So let's, you know, do you think 20 desserts is too, too many? Like, do you think that's too many to me? Like, we have all these great ideas for, for dairy cooking and dairy desserts and all these things. And it's like, oh, we only have four meals to, to get them in. Do you think that's enough? Like, right. We're, we're, we have so, so, how so do so we many. streamline that? Yeah. So, ba basically, um, the biggest tip I try to give people is balance. Um, my rule of thumb, both for my own cooking and for even um, when I'm speaking to clients or students, Balance is the single most important thing in creating a beautiful dairy meal that does not leave anyone feeling bloated, nauseous, <laughs> um, to, to, too much cheese, too much cheese, heavy. You know, th th you know, you work so hard on such a beautiful meal, and the last thing you want is for people to walk away like, uh. right. So, um, really, my rule of thumb is for every creamy, cheesy, decadent dish that you're putting on the table that's dairy, have one that's not. Like a fish dish. Like a par fish dish, um, like the fish re with the relish that I just described, that, that, that kind of, um, you know, um, some, something that is light, something that is not creamy or heavy or dairy. Lots of salads. Yeah, I do a lot of salads. Goat cheese salad. Lighten it up with a lot of salads. And even if you have a creamy salad, right? Say, say you have a creamy salad, then that counts as something that's creamy. So you need to have like, like my raspberry vinaigrette. Something light and refreshing. So uh, for as, man as many really heavy, um, cheesy, um, luxurious type dishes, have some that are just light and refreshing and it will really create more of a balance. Um, you want, everybody always talks up cheesecake, right? But by the time you get to that cheesecake, if you're, you're so... Like, yeah, if, if you are, if <laughs> and I love cheesecake. You want to be able to enjoy that cheesecake. So, yeah. there, you know, you can make beautiful, light meals that are just so much more enjoyable than the heavy, 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 heavy right. dairy dishes. So why why do we eat milk and sonyatif? What's the... I don't want to say halacha. Well, what's the it's minhag, it's minhag? What's the masora? Yeah. What's the masora? So the minhag... Tradition. The tradition, the custom to eat dairy. Um, there's a lot of reasons. Some of are more practical reasons and some are more, I would say, um, midrashic and more, you know, deep uh, spiritual ideas. So just practically speaking, um, it's brought down that we received the Torah on Shabbat, right? So if we received the Torah with all of its laws on Shabbat, one of which was keeping kosher and kosher um, slaughter, you know, and kosher, uh, in being able to have all this whole new set of laws to keep, we couldn't do it on Shabbos because you can't shecht on Shabbos and you can't kosher all your stuff on Shabbos. Uh -huh. So um, basically, as a practical, it was just a practical um, thing that happened. You know, we received it on Shabbos. We have all these new laws. Well, we can't keep them just yet. So we have, to, you know, our go-to is dairy because we can't have the meat yet without, uh -huh. without proper kosher ritual slaughter and you know, and also making sure everything they had was kosher in terms of cooking utensils and whatever. Interesting. So that, I, that's the practical answer. You know, so, so people ask me all the time, you know, questions about this and, and I was, you know, I'm going to bring Naomi in who's so informative and will answer it much with much more clarity than me. <laughs> that, 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 that's a practical answer. Then there's, you know, some nice answers also. One of the, there's eight different names for Mount Sinai. And one of them is, ref it's referred to as Gavnunim, which is white like cheese. Um, so that's another nice answer. Um, there, there's a bunch of, you know, different nice, nice ideas that way. Um, but then on a, d on a deeper level, which is always the message I try to give over to my students whenever we do like a Shavuos workshop, I, I try to also, t you know, the theme and the essence of Shavuos is really the idea of chesed, of loving kindness, basically of, of a giving, right? It's, um, a, you know, we experience the giving of the Torah and the giving of the Torah is the most highest form of generosity that God could have bestowed upon the Jewish people, right? So they 
it, we see in Shir Hashirim, which is um, Song of Songs, it says, honey and milk beneath your tongue. Um, and milk, Torah is likened to milk. Why? Because just how a, a baby can't survive without the nourishment of its mother's milk, the Jewish people can't survive without Torah. So it's, it's a nurturing, basically a nurturing effect of um, we're being nurtured by the Torah that we are given. Babies are nurtured by their mother's milk. It's like a whole food. And then even in, more than that, the chesed of Ruth, right? So we read Megillas Rus on Shavuos, and that's all about chesed also. So that's like the theme that runs through Shavuos. So when I always tell my, my students, when you're having that cheesecake, you see it's a mitzvah to have that cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I put on my, my uh, Facebook page, someone posted, and I reposted 20 different cheesecakes to make. You can go find where I put it. Um, on my I like I like mine highly alcoholic, just so you know. Oh, oh, nice. That was a really nice explanation. I didn't want to deter from that beautiful Dvar Torah that we had here. Uh, right Pleasure. here. That was amazing. Wow. I hope that I can be able to give that over. I'm going to make my kids listen to this last end part. You know, hopefully I, I'm like, did you hear the show today? Make sure you catch the last bit, you know, <laughs> about the Dvar Torah. That was really nice. Um, so within the joy of kosher and with all your amazing dairy cooking, and the vegetarian issue, you've got a great spread about Indian food. Where do you know Indian food from? You're Ashkenazi, you like. Yeah. And I love ethnic <laughs> cooking. I love Indian food. I, I love ethnic cooking. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I feel like I've just scratched the surface because the more I, I research and the more I learned about Indian I'm cooking. I'm just flipping. I'm just flipping. So you talk? The, the more I realized how enormous the body of Indian cuisine is. Ugh. India is a huge, huge country. There's many, many states, you know, within within the country. It's it's huge. And each region has their own different kind of cuisine. Yep. So I would, be, I, I would be lying if I said I was an expert on it because it's so vast, the, all the different cooking traditions. Um, so I feel sort of like I've scratched the surface. But what I, I did give and what I tried to give in the, in the feature... Um, was really like um, some basics of some popular dishes and some uh, basics of techniques for the staples in Indian vegetarian vegetarian cuisine. So we have um, a roti, you know, bread is like huge, yeah. huge. In, in, in Indian cuisine, there is no meal without bread because they don't use forks and knives. That's their vessel for scooping it up. Like they need the bread in order to put the Just, stuff on it right. and scoop it up with it. Oh. So they have an array, of, a huge array of different kinds of amazing breads and flatbreads and um, they're just delicious. They're so fresh. And in Indian homes, they're making it fresh themselves every night. It is not a big deal for them to make their breads. They do but it like It's that. like us with challah, right? I make challah in my sleep. But, but we're only doing it once a week. They're doing it, I'm saying, like in a regular Indian household. They'll do it once, you know, every day, every other day. Can we go out to eat Indian after it's this? It's awesome. I mean, it's really, and they fill their breads with like amazing aromatics and vegetables. It's just What's absolutely What's typical delicious. aromatic for... Um, Indian cuisine. Um, so if I was going to give curry, you, if no, well, actually that's a misnomer. So I'm glad you're <laughs> really. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. The give last you a, two minutes that we've got left. Yeah. I know time so flies, doesn't it? I'm gonna. I'm going to just give you a two minute, you know, um, summation of uh, in two minutes or less. Um, if you want to think about Indian cuisine, think about layering of spices. They do an amazing. They 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 have an entire palette of spices that they're using in their cooking, like turmeric. Red chili powder, um, cardamom, um, um, cumin, cumin, coriander, um, just it, and a, a huge, huge one. I said before turmeric, but turmeric is what gives that yellow color to curry powder. Yeah, curry powder. Curry powder is a spice blend that was created by yeah. the British colonists to simplify their spice palette. Okay. Really? So basically, she, she knows everything. So it basically came together instead of having your palette, and they ha I call it a palette, but they have a, bice, a box, a spice box with all of like, like it looks like a palette of color with all their different little jars of There spices. you go, Abby. Shout out and, to you. And they put a little of this and a little of that, and all, you know, Perig would have a field day. Um, and, <laughs> um, and basically, they, they, you know, dole it out. This, the curry powder that we know is like a little blend of all that. But um, but it doesn't really replace the potency of this kind of spices that you use, and not just powdered spices. They have the powdered spices for certain things, and they have See? Whole, a lot of whole spices. And we don't know what to do with them. They they use it at all different points in cooking. So they might they might put in um, 
some spice in the beginning and then they're going to put in a separate spice paste in the middle and then they'll finish off with what they call a tarka which is like a, a tempering of spice whole spices at the end so it's constant layering of spices and it's incredibly fit, flavorful and how do we know how to do this i mean we have your book we've got like about less than a minute left how do we how do we find more about i mean you have your amazing spread in the magazine that gives us a good rundown um how do we find more about indian cooking so i mean I think kosher that, Indian cooking. Kosher Indian cooking is, 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 I think it's still very much in its infancy in terms of. I want to uh, see a cookbook, <laughs> Naomi Ross cookbook. We've been talking about this since we know each time. other ten years. I'm working. I'm working. <laughs> yeah, I'm so not. I start. I stop. I start. I don't care. <laughs> Just go to my blog. Get it for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Naomi, this has been great. Isn't Thank it crazy you. how the time flies? Like you worry, yeah, how am I going to talk for twenty minutes? It goes like that. Thank you so much for having me. It was really a pleasure. Thank you. But you got to come on again. We've got to talk more Absolutely. stuff. We'll talk okay. more. Okay. And Ellie and, and I have my three interns here from SKA. Thank you very much. This is Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abels and Hyman. Stick around. We have music right up to Lichbenching, sponsored by our friends at Kedem. Wishing everyone a Shabbat Shalom and a Chag Sameach for Shavuot. See you in two weeks after Shavuot.